Okay, so um, I think we should just dive right in. What does everyone think of this book? It's a very different book. Oh, I probably should wait for everyone. Sorry, I wanted. I got really excited. I wanted to dive right in. Okay, I think I've waited a, a good few minutes. It's a truth reflector, I think. Okay. What, what does everyone think of the book? I think it's super interesting. Keeps me interested. All right, good. I like to see that. How, are, how am I? Um, doing pretty well. Doing pretty well. How's this snowstorm treating y'all? Not too bad. Uh, I got... It's not, not that bad. I'm loving the book. You really energetic today. I guess you had a coffee. I did have my coffee. Thank you for asking. <laughs> um, interesting. I think it's really interesting. Uh, what else we got? But we can't be tired to read it. Yes, I agree with that. Thought provoking. I had stopped reading, so I didn't finish before everyone. Uh, I love to learn about our own minds. I love this book. Um, I study child behavior and habits in college, so this is like a continuation of it. Cool. Loving it so far. I love how it touches on psychology, especially at the beginning where it speaks about memory. Mind opening. Haven't got my book yet, but it's on the way. Wonderful. Um, I think you'll love it when you start. How much espresso is in your coffee? Not a lot. I did get a double shot, though. Um, gave me a lot of insights regarding habits, how they form, what creates them. Interesting. Uh, finally, first one. Welcome. <laughs> Uh, glad you could make it. Uh, I feel a bit experimented on. All right. Uh, interesting, but very similar stuff I did in my degree, which makes some of it kind of repetitive. Telling my husband and everyone about it. Awesome. It's the Blue Monday. I'm happy here today. Oh, goodbye, Blue Monday. Uh, the human mind is complex, and this is showing us it's very true. It's making me overthink everything I do without thinking, so it's very thought-provoking. Um, this is something that's a great break from what I normally read. Yes, I wish I read it during my last high school years, so I could use it to write my marketing economy thesis. It's great, now I have a good excuse for why I struggle to go to the gym. <laughs> because it's the kind of book I usually read, but it's really interesting. I learned a lot. Really, really mind-opening. I think it's different, but this time of books are great, in my opinion. Currently studying for me. Uh, She had dementia for the last two years, but I always found it so amazing how the brain works. Yeah, so, um, okay. I'm going to try doing this again, guys. I'm going to pin the book early on, so just give me a second. Why is it all in caps? All right. Oh gosh, it's happening again. Yes! Okay. Yeah, look at that. I'm trying to create a new habit. <laughs> um, makes me question the psychological aspect that we have put applied to our own daily routine and habits. I always thought the science of how the brain works fascinating. Uh... Rita, I know what you mean. The whole habit loop thing was kind of repeated a few times. I think uh, that might be on purpose because it's trying to create an understanding for us. Um, but yeah, let me just touch on it. So we're reading The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg. I wanted us to read this book because um, I think analyzing the way we do things and trying to discover why will help in the future with habits, habit creation, and all of the things that I think are important to having a, a meaningful lifestyle. Uh, or, or one that you feel is uh, productive. 
Um, I think it's super cool because it, it, I think, like someone says, it, it forced me to kind of look at what I do and, and then analyze, like I said, why? Why do I do that when I wake up? Why do I brush my teeth that way? Why do I... So it, like, it does put you through like a, a spiral of trying to figure out and like, whoa, 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 everything I do is a habit. But at the same time, I think it's, um, I think it's super exciting. And uh, since it's such a departure from what we normally read, I think it's fun. I think it's a good start for the year, exactly. Uh, definitely made me think of some of the habits I may have developed without realizing, totally agree. Uh, I feel like it's still a mystery why I'm able to change habits in the past, but I can now. Eye opener, I'm getting super paranoid while washing my teeth. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that's important though, and I, I, I thought it was important to do at the beginning of the year, like you have all have mentioned, so that we can, um, I don't know, not waste time and like be the most efficient that we can this year. Uh, heard that the brain needs only 30 days to do something to become a habit. Exa I heard it was less, I heard it was 21 days. I'm going to be glad to read this because this is a uh, college is following becoming a counselor. Oh, cool. Um, I realized I was doing the exact same thing each morning in the exact same order. For me, the, the clearest definition of, like, or the clearest image of a habit that I have is the way I, I wash myself when I shower. I wash myself in the same way every time to the point where I can even, like, I can do it without being in the shower. Boom. <laughs> Uh, really explains why it's so hard to break habits. It's not just a matter of saying, oh, I'm going to stop doing this today. The habits needs part is super interesting. And I like that they break it down in that structure. They say, first you need, uh, come on, they have those, those beautiful little graphs or images, like the Q routine reward. So, if we wanted to, like, create or instill our own habit, we can mess with all of these things. The cue, the routine, the reward, even the craving. So, I think that's cool. Like, we're learning to, to kind of take the system that our brain implements and, and have control of the pieces that create the puzzle of a habit. So, we're like, oh... I'm going to mess with the cue. I'm going to really up the cue um, so that it's, it's very clear. And then I'm going to mess with the craving. I'm going to focus on it or something like that. And then, you know, I think it's super cool. And the drawing, yeah, Breakfast of Champions, I agree. Um, but I agree, breaking the craving is cool. And now I kind of get mad when I watch like an ad or when I see something and I'm like, oh, that would be delicious. I'm like, no, wait, that's, that's them working on my brain. That's not fair. <laughs> Did anyone else feel that way? That now you're looking at advertising and, and, and it's like almost annoying how they manipulate our, our uh, ah, okay. How the brain works. I keep noticing the habit loop being used in ads. Even sometimes when people are trying to get you to do something. Exactly. When you start reading or thinking of everything you do, you realize, oh my God, I've never thought about any of that or any of the science behind it. And it's really interesting. I feel like I work, I feel like my workout today was literally on autopilot. That happens. Uh, we don't realize we pay attention like blinking. It's super interesting that we can clearly manipulate our brains in our lives. Yes. I don't want to ads, they annoy me. The book opened my mind. I feel cheated by ads. Yes. You can erase a routine or behavior pattern by taking away the reward. That's another thing. Like, like I said, because of this book, we're able to analyze the manipulative tactics that companies have been using for us to buy things, and we can use them on ourselves to improve our lives. And I think that that is also like a metaphor for something bigger, that by, by trying to change something bigger, we can probably look in or change something smaller. Um... I, I don't know. I think it's been a, a super cool read. Um, minimalism helped me seeing through the manipulation of ads. Yeah. Ads are liars in a couple of words. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, some little infamy. I'm going to be doing a lot more rewarding for good behavior in my personal and work life. And I think that's, for me, what I'm going to try doing is, is really upping the reward. And um, I want to focus on the craving. Because I think that's what really I, I've noticed has like a lot of power to me is the craving. The idea that like... I used to have semi-sweet chocolate chips because when Tessa was last in Chicago, she made me pancakes. And they were in the, the cabinet. Well, I got up like 10 times to take like a handful of chocolate chips because they were delicious. So I have to figure out how to not do that because I can't eat all of the semi-chocolate chips. Uh, I think I'm going to do a board of my behavior during the day to see something I can change. See, that's cool. Uh, it makes you recognize what you're actually doing, and it's really crazy. Same, didn't take much to throw me off. And, and, and I, I don't know. So I think this has been already an interesting book. Um, how do you guys feel about the material itself versus what we normally read? Like, how is it to read a nonfiction book, although we normally read fiction books that are teaching us things in different ways, uh, bigger questions or, or truths that are kind of obscured? And now we have a nonfiction book that's pretty much just laying facts out for us and, and allowing us to do with, with what we please. Um, it's weird, I always put my left shoe on first, but it's so difficult to make working out and things like that into a habit. Now I'm a little hungry. It's empowering, now you can take control of your habits. Yes! I think people are going to be hating Cinnabon. And I'll tell you, I actually don't like Cinnabon because I feel like it's too cinnamony. It gives me a headache. It's too rich. <laughs> This is the first time I joined, and I'm really glad I did. Well, thank you. Welcome. Uh, I like this book more than fiction books. Okay, yes. Um, nice change. Love it. I like it, although my brain is still reading it as a fiction book. It's weird. Yes, that, that's the habit. Um, I like it, although my uh, marketing profits from what we think we need and what we just want to hear, like the Pepsi Dent thing. It's probably all BS and nothing that another toothpaste hasn't tried to sell already. No, I love how mind-blowing it is, more insightful than fiction books, written in a way that's easy to digest and isn't self-helpy. So, um, I know, I think I told everyone that the reason I read this book was my mom read it with her book club and was like, you should read it. I think it's been really interesting. And because of that, she's been able to start developing a habit for uh, working out and then other things as well. Um, so that's why she gave it to me. because She was like, I think this is very important. And in, especially in the industry of like, artist it's very important to develop healthy habits because sometimes we're working and sometimes we're not and at times that we're not if you have a healthy habit or ritual it makes it easier to pass time and be productive rather than just like play playstation all day or something although nothing wrong with doing that sometimes too um definitely something different from what we usually read actually really good and I think it would be very helpful for us to create good habits and be aware of our actions they just found a more catchy every time spread the message yes getting up ten times <laughs> back and forth trying to decide if I'm buying another test action <laughs> uh, I really enjoy reading nonfiction, so this is a nice change a lot of the nonfiction I read is for university exactly yeah okay cool 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 I like that they give a lot of examples so they understand better and I like that they give examples for each part right in the beginning of the book they talk about Okay, never mind. Uh Love the book, good. Don't usually read nonfiction, but this is one being super interesting. Also they explain things with little tales so it gets easier. Yeah. Uh I'm going to quote Sex Education, but if you change nothing, nothing will change. Currently watching season two. Love it. Tess and I love that show. Uh, fiction books are great, but this kind of books have a massive impact. <laughs> I didn't like the thought of reading nonfiction. I like the escapism of fiction, and it felt a bit for my homework, but I'm enjoying it now. Good. Uh, too Rich didn't actually like it. All right. Stop hating on cinnamon. No. I read this book in the morning, my fiction book in the evening. Cool. Create that habit. That's pretty dope. Um, I'm walking around my dorm with the live on it and suddenly have volume and they're going to make me go away. Ugh, sorry. 
Uh, nice break from fiction. So interesting, educating, like fiction, you can escape somewhere. I don't get that nonfiction, but then again, it's nice to break it up. Yeah, I, I think it's important to read everything so that you're working, you know, multiple parts of your brain. You're not just working on a one creative aspect. You're analyzing the stuff that's already kind of ingrained. Um, almost to be like a well-rounded brain, you know? Uh, we can attack it from a creative side, and that's wonderful, and it can help expand boundaries, but I think you can equally do the same type of growth and understanding from reading something more analytical and something more uh, concrete and structured. Well, no, I mean, not concrete and structured, I guess, scientific. Uh, educated by Tara Westover. I believe my mom read that book. Because I'm almost positive... Yeah, almost positive she told me to read it. Um, look, our models say help me to work on myself. What does my workout routine look like? Uh, that's like a habit. I get to the gym and I, I run a mile. And then, and that's actually how I kind of build it too. Like, oh. Well, my habit for the gym now is going to be like a mile and sprints and then I lift weights. But I, I like that because if I don't run the mile and I go to lift weights, I feel like my body's not warmed up and I don't feel like I'm ready. I feel like I can't lift as much and it doesn't feel as strong. Um, but yeah, I find it easy to read. I was worried it's going to be like man's search for meaning and I'm glad it isn't. That book drove me nuts. Sorry. Um... It's also me realize the struggle of having a job where I don't have set hours from day to day. Forming any habit based on time to day is extremely difficult. Exactly. I feel the same way, and that's why this book has helped. I'm looking forward to reading the rest of this book. I'm also reading The Subtle Light of Not Giving Up alongside, so it's a lot for me to think about. I have that book. I haven't read it yet. Okay, let's just say, like, that, the, the Eugene part, I felt so bad, because I, I felt, it, was a, it felt kind of like a monkey's paw. Have you guys heard of that? That, that superstitious thing that if you, you wish for something on the monkey's paw, but it kind of changes the wish. So he's like, I want to make, I wish one day I can do something really important and change the world. And they're like, you will, you're going to help with science and memory and all of this, but you're not going to remember any of it. Anyone else feel that way? I felt like it was like that. I was like, oh God. Feel so bad for that guy. Um, I'm also catching up on comics, which give me a sec. Yo, right? Didn't that Febreze thing kind of like mess you up? I was like, Febreze, how rude. <laughs> Yeah, okay. All right, so I'm, I'm caught up now. Oh, sorry. I keep forgetting that if I don't talk, there's no talking. Um, uh, sorry, I was just reading, and I'm like, I'm enjoying the conversation of comments that are going back and forth, you know? Sorry, guys. Totally for didn't realize that. Um... I love that for a moment he remembered to tell his daughter how proud he was of her. I think that was like it all coming back before he left. Super sad.
Yeah, right? You feel so bad for those little monkeys and rats and stuff. And then, and then the rats, they had this habit that they didn't even want to form. They were, like, forced to form. And then they, like, abused the rats for following the habit they had forced. Like, you know? Ugh. I hate rats, but no one deserves that. Um... <laughs> Well, I like where it's going so far. Um, so you guys know I think we're only going to have another like 10 or 15 minutes of this live because it was a short thing to read and it was just an introduction to kind of what we're going to be reading and then next live will be long. So we have a, we have a few minutes left. Um, <laughs> so uh, does anyone have any quotes that think are interesting? I mean... I don't know if there. I don't know if this book is very quote, quotey, quote heavy, because they're all kind of just. It feels very scientific. I feel like it's a, in, a, in a way a textbook -y, easier to read. But uh, oh my gosh, twenty twenty is year of the rat. Save the rats. <laughs> um, but one thing I, I do wanted to, I wanted to bring up was the, focusing on one pattern known as your keystone habit. Lisa taught herself to reprogram other routines in her life as well. So like the keystone habit, what's like the one thing? Uh, and that's what I'm trying to analyze. I'm like, what's the one thing that my day is kind of centered around? Like, is there, is there something I, I tend to do all the time or a craving that I have? Um, that if I change, I think one of my things that I need to change, I need to go to bed earlier. I, I, <sighs> Literally, I became a vampire, so I like to stay up late, and I need to go to bed early, so I need to change that habit, and I think that would actually help all of my other habits. I'd wake up earlier, I'd probably feel better and less drowsy in the morning, and maybe I'd work out earlier, but maybe if I work, I don't know, you know, I, I like that this book is forcing me to analyze my daily behavior. A community was a giant collection of habits occurring among thousands of people that, depending on how their influence could result in violence or peace. How fascinating is that? And that's something I've noticed. I've, I've read a, a lot of like military novels, and in a lot of those books, the habits are, are, are talked to, are, are talked about. Um, yes, the the quote that kind of summarizes that your brain can't tell if it's a bad habit or a good habit. It's just a habit. Hey, cool. Because our brains power down at the wrong moment, we might fail to notice something important. Uh, the brain has this amazing ability to find happiness, even if the memories of it are gone. Yeah, but the problem is I, I watch TV right before bed, you know? It's bad. All our life so far, as it has definite forms, is but a mass of habits. One of my biggest cravings is definitely getting to read. I wake up and go to work, and all I can think about is when I can get back home and sit in my books. Yeah. So, yeah, um... I'm liking the response. I have to say, I'm, I'm glad we're all enjoying this book. I was nervous when choosing it because I knew it was something that we, we, we don't normally do. So I'm, I'm really glad that uh, we all seem to be taking it in stride and, and excited about it. So I know we're going to get to part. I find this book an easy read, too, right? Like, I feel like we could read more. What do you guys think? Because I feel like it's, it's pretty simple material. What do you guys think?
We're all night owls. Yeah, easy to read. So I feel like we could go a little farther than we normally do. Um, let's do 120 pages. Oh. Here, because then another 120 pages. Yeah, so we're gonna finish this book in two weeks. Is that cool? Um, we're gonna read to chapter seven. Chapter seven. Uh, chapter seven, page 182. Chapter seven is known as uh, how Target knows what you want before you do. How Target knows what you want before you do. I guess Target's in this book. So we're gonna go chapter seven because then we can finish the book for the following week. Is that cool? Awesome. Um, Rita, I did not forget about those two titles. I will post them today. Sorry. <laughs> Up to chapter seven. Up to, not through. Up to. Stop at chapter seven. When you read about Target, how Target knows what you do before you do, you wait. Um, but I will post those two books today. Thank you for reminding me. Uh... No, but I think this is a super cool way to start. I'm glad we all are, are kind of actually invested in this book, and it's not one of the books that drag. I feel like the habit of reading is harder to do when we have books that we're not excited to read, and that's something I don't want. Uh, I think part of, the, part of this book club is to recognize that reading is important, to recognize that some books are amazing, and recognize that some books we're not going to really vibe with. And I'm glad we're vibing with this book. Um, yes, we will meet on Sunday. Sunday. I need to bring it back to Sundays. Uh, the Sunday I was traveling, so that's why I was like, oh, God, no. I have so, Sundays. We will meet on Sunday probably around, uh, around this time, maybe an hour later or an hour earlier. Uh, so, Sunday. Uh, yeah, and with that, I'm, I'm going to... It's Monday, so let's all use this week to kind of analyze our habits. And if one of, if we can pick one small habit loop, and we'll talk about it. I'm, I'm going to do one, and we'll talk about it on Sunday to see if I can like discover a habit loop that I have. Um, oh, and I saw something really cool at a fair yesterday, so I'm going to post that too. It was a it's this company that takes books and turns them into clocks. And you can even bring them like one of your favorite books. And they'll turn it into a clock. I don't know. It was super cool. I'll post it. Uh, I'm going to start a habit journal. That's really smart. A habit journal. Talking major or minor habit loops. Whatever habit loop you discover. Even if it's simple as like, oh, I noticed that... I have the habit of putting my left shoe on before my right shoe, and then I tie my right shoe before I tie my left shoe. Even if it's something that simple, I think starting simpler and working into the, the habits that we don't really realize, you know? So let's, let's try that this week. Um, we'll talk on Sunday up to chapter seven. Uh, thank you guys for joining. I'm glad, I'm excited about this book. I'll post those two titles later today. Now. Continue questioning, continue searching, continue exploring, continue growing, continue questioning, and uh, continue to be positive forces of change in your communities. I will see you guys on Sunday. Um, all right, we will talk soon. Have a good one.